Amen. Let's get started. Amen. Uh, with a hymn and uh, give me one old old Deacon Deacon Steed hymn. And that one that you know he'll sing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down, friends don't treat me. Huh? Like that one. Burdens down. Friends don't treat me like they used to. Burdens down, Lord. Burdens down, Lord. Since I laid my burdens down. Burdens down, Lord. Burdens down, Lord, since I laid my burdens down. Amen. Amen. I do feel a whole lot better since I laid my burdens down. I don't feel like I'm packing a lot of weight when you let it go and let God have it. I know your friends, you know, your we can say, your so-called friends, they don't treat you the same way when you lay your burdens down. No, no, no. They, they, they don't treat you the same way. They treat you differently when you lay your burdens down. But we thank God. We thank God. We thank God that there, there is a friend. And his name is Jesus Christ. He will not leave us, nor will he forsake us. Amen. Let us uh, let me read the Psalms 71, and we'll go a little higher. Uh, it reads, You, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong refuge, to which I may resort continuously, you have given me commandment to, you have given me the commandment to save me for you are my rock and my fortress deliver me oh my god out of the hand of the wicked out of the hand of the unrighteous and the cruel man for you are my hope oh lord god you are my trust from my youth but you i have but you i have been upheld from birth you, you are who took me out of my mother's womb. I have become as a, I have become as a uh, wonder to many, but you are my strong refuge. Let, let my mouth be filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. I read to you Psalm 71, verses 1 through 8. May the Lord add a blessing to reading, hearing, doing of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, once again, Father, you have saw fit to wake us up this morning and start on us on our way. We want to tell you thank you. Thank you, Father, for the blood that you shed on Calvary that allowed us to be here and to just have one more day to just lift up your name. We just want to tell you thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for making a way out of no way because we know it wasn't because we've been so good. It wasn't because we did everything you told us to do and dotted all our I's and crossed all. We know it was your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Jesus. There was danger out there as we slept and we slumbered, Lord, but you, it was your grace and your mercy that allowed us to be here. We want to say thank you. Bless you right now. Bless you. Being such an awesome, wonderful God, Lord, who sits high, looks low, Lord, and we can't go over you, nor can we go around you. We just want to tell you, thank you. We love you. We love you. Bless our pastor. We ask you, please crown his head with wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and increase his territory, Father. We come praying for those people who are lost. 
the ones that's on the street. Maybe they feel as though they're trapped in some type of organization. But Father, we know that if you made a way for children of Israel at the Red Sea, so you can make a way for them. For yes. Lord, we just want to tell you we love you. Thank you right now. Bless to touch that man, that boy, girl that's in prison. Give him a new direction in life. We just want to tell you thank you, Lord. Bless right now. Touch each and every member of Sweet Home, Lord. Increase us. Strengthen us in number and strengthen us in the word. We just want to get closer to you. Bless you. Thank you right now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 It's good to be here today, y'all. Good to be here. Uh, one more night, we're able to come together and give God some praise. Amen. It is, it is, it is just a blessing to be able to give God some praise. Amen. One more time. While our blood, while the blood is still running warm in our veins. I want to give him some praise. Amen. We're going to get out the way. We have a teacher that's going to come. He's going to come and uh, in his own way. We know him. We've seen him before. He tells us all the time, get in the book. Get in the book. Y'all going to hear that tonight. Get in the book. Come on up here, Reverend Stanley. <laughs> Amen. Give him a hand as he come. Amen. 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 They say, I say, get in the book. That's a good thing. And I thank God for that because I know that the same work that He was willing to work in me, He's willing to work in you. Let's bow here for a word of prayer. Father God, is again, oh Heavenly Father, that you are so fit that we may be able to come together, that we may be able to learn of thee. Thank you, Father, for your word, for your word we have hidden in our heart that we might not sin against thee. But, Father God, we thank you for the hope of the advocate that you have that makes intercessions for us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm, 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 I'm kind of pumped up, motivated, and all that. That, uh, that business meeting last night showed it had me on the road. I mean, boy, I look at here. When you, when, when, when you have, when you got time to just, just think about how good God is to sweet home. See, I've been around sweet home a long time mighty long time and I done seen us come from the village down here and I'm here to tell you boy God been making way all the time and he's going to make a way again all the naysayers step back so sweet home on the move again you know I want to talk about I got two scriptures one Old Testament scripture and one New Testament scripture and we're going to see if we can't bind these things together one is uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. I was sitting in my chair, and God showed me this. He said, tell them we got hope. Yeah, we got hope. Tell, just tell them we got hope. And, and the other one is uh, Ephesians 1, 18. Now, y'all know, I, I, I tell y'all, I, I, I don't just try to, try to put stuff together. Try to take my time and study, so that when I when I when I talk to to, to the, the church concerning the Word of God, I want to be right. I might be wrong sometimes, but I want to, my desires to be right. Rightfully divide the Word of Truth. And it, yeah, uh, in this particular passage, it brought me back to last night because I was hearing some things. Last night in the meeting that I really wasn't concerned to hear. Because if God can do something once, I'm a living witness. He can do it again. The same things we were hearing back then, we're hearing again. Same thing. Different level. Same devil. Different level. So I want to in, in, increase our spirit that God knows the whole, the whole thing. When he was talking, when Jesus was here, he was talking to his disciples. And he said, I got things I could tell you, but right now you wouldn't be able to, you, would, you, can't, you, can't, you can't hold it. You, you wouldn't be able to understand it. God brought us from down there here. 
and 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 we we didn't understand how we were going to do it. Didn't 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 even figure it, it could be done. But he did it. Now here we go again. Ready to step out on on some more hope. But if he did it back then, he's able to do it again. Right. Jeremiah uh, 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. A future and a hope. He has some thoughts that's going to give us a future and some hope. And then Paul kind of fixed it all up. You know, Paul was a was a a student of the of the scripture. He he knew that the prophet Isaiah had already prophesied that he had that he had that God had thoughts concerning you all, us. And these thoughts was for a future and a hope. Then Paul prayed, he said, here are uh, Ephesians 1, I'm going to start with 16. He say, do not cease to give thanks for you. He did, you know, he was praying. He said, I don't, I don't cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. See, Paul had been thoroughly convinced that Jesus was the one. See? He had been, he, you know, he, he had fought this thing and pondered on it like, like, like Grieve would say, and he had came to the conclusion who Jesus Christ was. And he said, he's praying for us. He's giving thanks for the church. And he said, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge of him. He prayed that the church would, would be able to have some revelation knowledge of how God worked. And he said that the eyes of your understanding, being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. That hope there was regulated back here. That same hope that Jeremiah was talking about in the Old Testament was confirmed by prayer from Paul. Paul said, I want, you, I want you to understand that God is your hope. The hope is not in you or me or, or, or what we can do. It's what God can do. Those who have an eye, let them, I mean, an ear, let them hear what the Lord said. This thing here is bigger than we are. That ought to give you some kind of explanation that you can't do it. My little, my, my little grandbaby, uh, I, I'm so glad I got, you know, like, she just, she just wins me over. I mean, little bit of stuff that, that she say, like, like, you know, I, I, I say, well, Papa coming. She said, I hope so. Huh? Because she knows sometimes Papa might not be able to get there. But her hope is in that I'm coming. And when I drive up there, boy, she bust that door, man, she come up out of there. I mean, man, I, I, know, I know by the way she hugged me, she hoped I was coming. And she know when Paul Paul show up, Paul Paul got something. Don't you know when we open up with hope that God go come through and act like we know he go come through and we start getting in praise right now for what he's going to do? Don't you know it's a, it's a level that says he's able huh, to do exceedingly? Man, we just living on exceeding level. We got two more levels to go up, abundantly and above. This place is here to stay. God has put people in place. Man, I just sit back sometime and I just watch this thing. That Sunday, Sunday I was so happy. I was sitting on that front row just crying, watching our babies do stuff. Little Malachi. Woo! Never thought of little Malachi. Little Malachi would get up there like that. That boy got up there like that said his speech, went on back in line and started kicking people. It's okay. <laughs> He said his speech. As soon as he got, I'm just as soon as he got through with his speech, he went right on back there and got in line and started kicking the little boy on the side of him. That's that's Malachi. But he our Malachi. And our hope is in him. 
So he's kicking somebody today. Next week, he may be patting them on the back, giving them some encouragement. You never know. But one thing we do know is our hope is not in man. Man can't do this. This thing here is big. And, 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 and I, was just, I was just sitting there just at awe. Because, see, not only is Randy my pastor, he's my friend. And me and him, we talk, we talk friendly to one another. This thing been on his mind for a little while. And, and, and it's been so deep on his mind that he didn't even want to tell y'all. Because of the naysayers, the people that were going to try to come down. But you know what? I told him, I said, Randy, we've been here before. They said it before. They're going to say it again. But I know who's able. Why? Because of what he's done in my life. You got to have some look back time. See? When you got some look back time, you can remember stuff. You can look back. Well, he was able to end. Look how, look, look how, look how far he done brought me now. Half the people that, you, when you look at, at our audience now, the, many of the people that, that's here now wasn't down in 1705. If you ever think we ain't got enough room, sometimes take a stroll in the back. When you take a stroll in the back, you... you you, you dodging them. Boy, they just everywhere. They going to need somewhere to go. Them babies, them babies ain't going to stay babies. Them babies growing. And like they growing, we growing too. We have a hope. It's in the word. The book says, after the 70 years, we done went through the 70 years. Our 70 year period is up. It's time for us to open up our arms and receive blessings joyfully, without being grunted, without being with no regret, knowing that he's done it before and he's able to do it again. Like, like I say, I, I, I sat there today and I thought about how grateful my, my little grandbaby is when I show up. There have been many times that Paul Paul didn't show up, but it never deterred her hope. She still, every time, every time she called me, she said, well, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, and that hope that she has motivates me. Huh? It motivates me to show up. If it ain't but for five minutes, I'm going to show up. Even if Papa got to put something to the side till later, he going to show up. And she know, and I, when I show up, I say, I say, I found something around here. Look like a bag of popcorn for somebody. Who is it for me? <laughs> huh? She know that if Papa show up, and he got something in his hand, who it's for? It's for me. But it's all in that hope. Now, if I can get a feeling of joy from her in my appearance, when I show up, I get a feeling of joy in my heart. God said, I made you in my own image. So if I get a spirit of joy in my heart when I come through for don't you think he does too? Especially his word bigger than mine. I may not show up. But he going to show up every time. So let's just put our hope in the hope maker. Put our hope in him. Chug the line. Do our part. Stand up. Do some work. Be willing to get busy. Some of us sitting down, it's time for us to get up. Some of us that ain't saying something, encouraging one another, it's time for us to start encouraging one another. God is getting ready to take us to another level. And it's the devil at that next level. The Bible says every time I desire to do good, evil is always present. Know this. Don't think it's going to be easy, but it can be done. It wasn't easy before. Pastor said yesterday that we're getting ready to play this thing off. They said we couldn't do it. Huh? I mean, I know they said it because they told me. I said, man, I don't care what y'all say. My Bible tells me. That he ain't going to hold me accountable for it. He's going to hold him accountable. So I put all my trust in Randy making the right moves. And he did make the right moves. He went on, bucked off the naysayers, and here we are. But it's time for us to go up higher. It's time for us to go to that exceedingly part. Exceedingly abundant. It's time for us to go to that abundantly part. The, the, the vision is broad. Our pastor has a vision. He has a vision. And I'm a believer.
that his vision can be met by us. It can be met by us. I'm, I, 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 I'm, just, I'm just thoroughly convinced. I done seen too much. I done seen it happen. You know, I mean, I, I just have seen it. So I, I, you know, I wanted to encourage us on hope. Hope is a good thing. The Bible even says that we are not like those that have no hope. You know, it's a lot of people that don't have no hope. But we are fortunate enough to be in Christ. And in Christ, all hope abounds. If you got a problem, he got a solution for it. In Jesus Christ, all hope abounds. So we're in a good spot. Let's stay, let's do like the pastor say. Let's pray on it. Let, 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 let's claim it. And let's get about our business doing it. Because it's not only going to be great for, for Sweet Home, it's going to be great for the community. Thank y'all. All right, let's make your hands happier tonight. Thank you. This is my indication I've had a great day in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Join me in a brief moment of prayer. Father, we love you so much. Thank you for your great grace today. Thank you for your loving kindness. And Father God, we agree even tonight that it is still better than life. Thank you for giving us brand new mercy today. And we know, Father, that it's simply because of your mercy for us that we have not yet been consumed. Thank you, Father God, for your great love. A love, Father God, that moved you to give thine only son on our behalf. That if we would place our faith and our trust in him and what he did when he died up on the cross, that we could have the hope and the assurance even on tonight Amen. to know that every single one of our sins, past, present, and future, have already been forgiven. Even our very name have been recorded in your Lamb's book of life, never to be erased again. That happens to us solely on the merit of what he did with his death. So we claim that tonight. That's our hope. Our hope is in Christ. Our hope is in the cross. And Father God, we know that that's a sure hope and that hope is an anchor for our very soul. I pause tonight to pray, my Father, for every single person that feel the need of you tonight. We know that we all need you, God, whether we admit it or not, whether we realize it or not. Every single human being, Father God, needs you and need to help and the salvation that only you can provide. Father God, we pray for those that are sick tonight, for those that are suffering, for those that are going through the trials and the trauma of life. We know that you're merciful, and we know that you're the God of all compassion. Don't have to tell you what to do because you specialize this. There's nothing that is too hard for you to do tonight. We pray that you would comfort as only you can. Continue, Father God, to grow us that we can be to the praise of your glory. I pray, Father God, that as we walk with you, that we will grow and learn that you are spirit. And we must worship and follow you, Father God, only in the spirit. I pray, Father God, that you would help us to mortify the flesh every day. That you can live greater and you can live more in us. Bless us tonight as we sit to learn you and to study your word. Thank you for the teachers that you've already given to do what we do by way of our gifting. And I thank you for gracious, loving people that come to hear your word so that we can live it out every day. Bless the vision and provision that you have assigned to this local assembly. Only you can perfect it. Only you can bring it to pass. Let your will be done. Bless us now. Keep us now. In Jesus' name. Amen. You don't mind if I let it go up again, do you? This is my indication again tonight that I've had a great day in God. Amen. So good to see you and to be with you on this Tuesday. I hope and I pray that you've had a blessed day and a good day in the Lord. Amen. Uh, we are back uh, uh, Tuesday again for Bible study. And it's always uplifting and encouraging to see you when you press your way to come not because you're bored, not because you don't have nothing else you could be doing. You come because you love God. 
You come because you have a hunger for the word and you do know that we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We really need uh, the help of God and the word of God to help us to maintain our walk with the Lord. So uh, good to see you on this Tuesday night. So I believe that it's safe to say tonight that we are going to conclude our study that we entitle the Christian duty relative to uh, renewing our mind. That's what we've been talking about for about the last two sessions. Uh, Paul told us not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. But he really didn't give us a blueprint as to how to do that. He didn't give us a step-by-step -step systematic approach to doing that. But I do believe that we can safely conclude that it is in the scripture. And if we would do like the Berean church, study the scripture, then we'll be able to find out what our role and what our responsibility really is as it relates to the renewing of our mind. I've already said it and I'll say it again and I'll jump forward. Nobody graduates from renewing your mind. This is something that I will continually be doing as a believer until the day I die or the day that I am literally raptured uh, when Jesus Christ comes back for the church. That's a part of my Christian's duty is to renew my mind. God gives me help and resources, but ultimately it becomes my responsibility to engage, to learn, uh, to extract truth from the scripture that I could apply it to my life, that I can get my mind renewed, okay? We have already been talking about uh, what Paul said in Romans uh, uh, 12, 1 and 2. Tonight, I want to jump off in uh, the book of Philippians chapter number 2 and verse number 5. Let's look at Philippians 2, 5, and uh, we'll go forward uh, on tonight. Let's get that particular portion of scripture. Philippians 2, 5. Give me just a second to catch up with you. Paul is writing to those Philippians. Philippians 2, 5. Now, first of all, I want us to note that this is not a suggestion. This is rather a command. He is not suggesting that it will be good on your part to do this. He is actually commanding these believers to do this. He says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, that says to me that once I got saved, I did not get the mind of Christ. That was not a part of my salvation package at that moment. It is something that is going to happen to me as I yield and as I obey, as I understand that this is something that is required of me as a part of my Christian duty is to get the mind of Christ so that I can think like Christ because as I think, I am going to conduct myself. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's why it is so very important for me and you as a believer to have the mind of Christ. The word let simply means to yield or to come under. He says, this is something that I want you to yield to. And I am commanding you to do this. I want you to yield to this. Let this mind be in you which is also in Christ. Implication is that the mind of Christ was not already in me. He's talking to saved people. These people are already saved. And he's given them some doctrine, some biblical instructions about how to live the Christian life. He says right now, what you need to do, you need to let this mind that was in Christ be in you. Then he talks forward from there to share with them what kind of mind Christ had. Christ had such a mind to please and, and to obey God until he said he humbled himself to the cross, even the depth of the cross. Uh, he stripped himself. 
of all of his royalty, all that he did, so that he could do exactly what the father wanted him to do. He did not have a mind to do his thing or to do it his way. He forsook his mind so that he could get the mind of Christ, that he could humble himself even unto the dying of the cross. And as a result of this, God now has exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. You see, whenever I get the mind of Christ and I begin to live like Christ, I can now expect for God to move on my behalf just like he began to move on Jesus' behalf. Because when I humble myself under the mighty hand of God, he said that he would exalt me in due time. So my, my responsibility and the task that confronts me and you going forward as we live out our Christian life here, this is not something that is going to happen automatically. I have to yield to this. I got to let it. Say, for instance, if me and Deacon Bourgeois was walking together and I could outwalk him, but what I could do, I could let him lead the way. Now, that's a choice that I'm going to have to make. I yield my right of way to him. Uh, it's just like driving on the freeway and you have a yield sign and you fail to do that. You could have. It didn't tell you to stop. It simply told you to yield. All he's saying is yield yourself so that you can now have this same mind. Get out of your mind. Don't want to do it your way, but yield your mind so that you can now have the mind of Christ, that we can think like Christ, that we can please him, that we can begin now to live and do what he would have us to do. All right? We talked about two important uh, aspects I believe that is involved in renewing the mind. Got to put the word in my mind, okay? My mind is renewed when I put the word of God in my mind. Secondly, we talked about my mind is renewed based upon my prayer, based upon praying, talking to God. Out of that, my mind can be renewed because whoever has my ear controls my destiny. Whoever you talk to on an ongoing basis is going to have some impact and influence on the way you live and the decision that you make with your life. Uh, birds of a feather flock together. If you keep company with people, it will manifest itself in your life. Likewise, if I spend time talking to God, then I can expect the influence of God to come up on my life. I start thinking like God uh, when, when, uh, Maybe I have a challenging moment with combative thoughts or whatever. If I'm talking to God on an ongoing basis and praying and fellowshipping with God, then I'm going to have the Holy Spirit there helping me now to get on the same wavelength with God that I can think the thoughts of God and I can begin to operate like God. But it starts with my fellowship and with my prayer life and with my communion with Almighty God. It helps now for me to transition and to renew my mind. And as a result of this, I am now getting the mind of God. And that's what I need in order to live a victorious, overcoming Christian life. All right? Now we're going to conclude tonight. Let's move back to the Old Testament, Proverbs. is where we're going to go back. Go back tonight to Proverbs chapter 4. Go back to Proverbs chapter 4, and we're going to pick up with verse number 23. <clears throat> this is going to be step three of renewing our mind. If you've written down step one and two, then let's get the final one on paper tonight. We renew our mind by simply guarding our mind. I renew my mind so that I can have the mind of Christ by guarding my mind. I have to put a filter on my mind. And we're going to talk about that for the duration of this session tonight. That if I am going to continuously renew my mind, then I must guard my mind. All right? Let me call your attention back to uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. This is the wisdom of Solomon. He says, 
My Bible is Old King James. The newer ones and some other translations says, guard your heart. One translation actually says, guard your mind with all diligence. Keep it. Put a watch over it. Put a watch over your heart. What I want to explain tonight so that you can see it. When the Bible talks heart, it is never talking in this blood pump that I have on the left side of my body. It's not talking a physical organ. It is more apt to say, he's saying, I want you to guard my mind, my control mechanism, what controls me. The mind, because we operate out of our sensory mechanism, that's what navigates us. So he said, if you're going to have your mind renewed, he said, you're going to have to put a guard over your mind. Got to guard your mind. Now here's why he tells us that we should do that. He says, guard your mind with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Here's what we have to understand. Whatever is in my mind, is going to work to navigate and to control me. And I am going to live my life based on that. Out of it comes the issues of life. The way I think, uh, my actions, uh, my belief system, all of that comes directly out of my senses, out of my mind. And I have to guard my mind. You do know tonight, that the devil is after your mind. That's where the battle really goes on. It's right here in my mind. He wants my mind. So what I have to do as a believer, now that I understand these things, how important it is for me to live this life that Jesus wants me to live by renewing my mind, and I know that's a part of my Christian duty, and I have resources from God, the Holy Spirit, other teachers, the Word, etc., to help me in that process. Now that I understand that, and I'm beginning to do that, I must now guard my mind. I have to guard it so that the devil does not snatch out what I've already put there. Because I can assure you, the devil is vowing for control of my mind just like God is doing that. Either I'm thinking godly thoughts or I'm thinking ungodly thoughts. I'm fellowshipping or meditating on things of God or amusing over maybe things of the world or things that are ungodly. So all of this seesaw type of a situation, it goes on in the mind of every single one of us all day long. So what I have to learn how to do as I'm sitting there thinking, living life, and all of a sudden, something jumps up in my mind. Bam! You can, I'm talking out of nowhere. You wasn't even thinking about it. And I asked myself one day, how did that get in my mind? And God said, you wasn't guarding it. You leave your mind wide open, and the devil shoot darts up in it. My God. How did that get into my mind? I know. See, here's the reality of it. You know how you should be thinking as a believer, and you know God's thought versus the devil's thought. So when that foul thought, an uh, ungodly thing, bombard my mind, I know, hey, that's not what I want to be thinking. I want to be thinking on the thing that Paul told me to think on in Philippians so that I could have peace with God and the peace of God. So when that thought hit my mind, I have to understand, I was sitting there, idle-minded. I was sitting there, maybe not with my mind engaged, and the devil saw an opportunity, and he dropped a nugget in it. Can I work with you tonight? He drops a thought in it to see if he can get you to respond to it. That's what he does. And if he can rouse me, or get a reaction from me, and if I start meditating on it and chasing that thing, the devil continues to put more in there because he's now tapped into an area in my mind where I am still vulnerable. And he knows if he can get in my mind, he can get in my life. He can control my mood. He can control how I'm going to live, how I'm going to respond. All of that simply because 
He can get into my mind. It happens because I am no longer standing guard over my mind. So we must renew our minds by guarding our mind. We have to think about what we are thinking about. That may sound a little, what they say, paradoxical, but really we have to think about what I'm thinking about. Here's an exercise for you. Sometimes just catch yourself and ask yourself, what am I, what am I thinking about? How in the world did I start thinking about? Can I do this tonight? The mind, the mind is so amazing. It really is. It, it's, it's brilliant. The, the mind of man, the mind is, we say it's a terrible thing the way, the mind is an awesome. The mind is, in my opinion, more awesome than any computer that man will ever be able to devise. The mind is something else. I can be sitting right here tonight looking in your face and my mind can take me all the way back to St. Augustine, Texas and put me in a nightclub uh -huh. that I can remember what I was doing and looking directly at you all at the same time. Amen. Have you heard this? Uh, your body is here, but your mind is way across town. Uh -huh. A lot of times we bring our bodies to church, but we don't bring our mind. Our mind is way across town. Not only that, maybe our mind is on the fact that I'd be glad when Rebel even get done preaching because I'm hungry. <laughs> I, I already got my uh, place reserved at, at the restaurant that I can go eat when church is over. All this stuff goes on right here in our mind. So what I have to do as a means of God in my mind, I have to check myself. Man, what are you thinking about? I have to think about what I'm thinking about. Because when those thoughts begin to bombard my mind, if I do not guard my mind by using the weapons that God has provided to pull down those thoughts and those high things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God, that thing would establish a stronghold in my mind. Let me, I'm, I'm going to do it tonight. Strongholds that every... I, if I was a bit man, I would put money down tonight. Everybody in here tonight got some type of stronghold in your mind. Now, that stronghold did not get there overnight. That stronghold was developed there over time. A thought came, and I played with it. I entertained it, and I didn't pull it down. I didn't bring it under the subjection of the authority of God with the weapons that he has provided. I let that thing linger. The devil nourished it. And before you know it, that thing now has bloomed and blossomed in my mind. And I find now that that thing can buffet me from time to time, and I really don't have no control over it. That thing now ends up, because it tells me what to do. Because it has become a stronghold. It got there because I was not guarding my mind. I wasn't monitoring what I was thinking about. I just said, well, let me just think it. Here's the deal. If it stays there a long time and you, must, you muse it, you meditate on it, that thing begins to grow. It begins to germinate. And, and that stronghold is establishing. And once it takes root, it becomes a struggle to pull that thing out of your mind. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And the devil's strategy now is to pull me back so that my mind is no longer renewed to the things of God that he can now exercise dominion over my life. And once he gets my mind, he can exercise dominion over how I live my Christian life. Saved as I want to be, but I can't live for God because my mind has not been renewed. I have to, I have to do a sea law. I have to stop and think about what in the world am I thinking? What am I thinking? My God. My God. Some of the stuff go through my mind. I said, Jesus Christ. 
I said, God, I'm sure glad you're the only one know. <laughs> See, you're looking at me like you ain't got that problem. Oh, did I think that way? About that thing, about that situation? Where did that come from? Lord, oh, have mercy. Let me get my mind. Let me get my mind. Give me my mind back. Give me my mind back. Here's the reality. Here's the deal. You can be sitting up just as calm and minding your own business, and all of a sudden, my wife can say something to me. And bam! My then I gotta pray. I gotta pray. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. One mind tell me, go in there and bless her real good, Randy. Then another mind say, Randy, a kind word turns away wrath. I just go in there and look at it and say, you know, I love every ounce of you. I just love you to the core. And and that just killed her. She just she can't take it. Get weak knees. Just, just, just wear her out. I learned that. I learned that as a result of get. See, before I got my mind renewed, I went in there like a bull in a china closet. And the other said, stand up for yourself. You the man. You the head of the house. Don't, I could hear my old crazy uncle. Don't take that off no woman. But they were single. I ain't stupid. They were single. That's why they were single. Because I can tell you, if you're married, you're going to have to take something. So that's what's wrong with this young generation. They don't want to take nothing. I've been taking ever since I said I do. And she's been taking ever since. That's the only way I do stays I did. And if you don't get your mind renewed and check yourself and think about what you're thinking about, crazy, I'm talking about Mr. Crazy comes and he just messes with your mind and before you know it, you're all over the place because I'm not guarding my mind. I'm not thinking about, man, what? I'm not watching what I'm thinking about and as a result of that, it gets here and it begins to work with me. So I have to think about what it is that I'm, thinking about and that relates to guard my mind we have to guard what we look at and we have to guard what and who we listen to we have to guard what we look at because what we look at affects our mind Tonight when we go home, we'll probably turn on the TV and uh, catch maybe one episode or a partial episode of the have and have nots. There are some things on the have and have nots that I, I just, I, I have to just, because it's not good to look at it. And what the devil is doing, he's got it blurred everywhere. You almost got to be like the scribes and Pharisees, walk around with your eyes closed and run into buildings and everything because there's so much around you till you just got to walk around like a drunk man or a dead man or a blind man because there's so much for your eyes to see. My God. It's, it's hard. It's, it's, it's frightening. And it's dangerous because you have many sick-minded and immature people that are watching stuff that they are not mature enough to process. I'm going to say something. Sometimes a lot of this stuff that we are seeing played out in the lives of people, not giving nobody a pass. What happened Sometimes they introduce children to too much violence too soon. Television. Parents said that didn't feel, that didn't put a guard over that child 
setting up that, that child four and five years old and you got him watching uh, Friday the 13th and Hacksaw and, and uh, Machete where they just killing up everything. That child's mind is not developed enough to handle all of that, all of that carnage of flesh. That child's mind cannot handle that. And that child grows up, got a warped mind, and begins to think, okay, uh, uh, don't know how to value human life. They didn't, they didn't protect what the child was watching because the child started watching it too soon. Now, here's the deal, and we grown folk, we might well to tell the truth. You can't turn your TV on without sex. They got it in cartoons now almost. You can't turn your TV on without sex. Now, here's what you have to understand. Those of us that are grown, married, been married, etc., been there, done that, we understand that. But when your children are young, you have to school them ahead of time about, okay, this is this and this is this. You can't let them just sit there and indulge in that and don't put a filter on that and don't check that. It's going to affect their mind, what they are looking at. It just, uh, it's everywhere. It's un if you're going to watch TV, it, you can't hardly go to a clean movie anymore. Uh, 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 you, 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 you got it. Every advertising commercial is there. I'm men, and, men and women both just naked. It's, it's uh, right now, ain't no shame in it. And uh, I'm, it ain't good for me to watch Halle Berry uh, in an R-rated movie. It ain't. I don't want to see Halle Berry walk around with no clothes on. Now she don't provide a whole lot of temptation because I know I know I I don't rate, but it just ain't good for my eyes. To see a whole lot of this stuff. And when we introduce children to it too soon, it affects them. All of this right now affects us. So what I have to, I, I, I got a guard. I got a guard what I'm looking at. As grown as I am, no, I'm not going to sit there. I'm not going to sit there and I look at it. I see, I can, I can see it coming. I told my, I said, yeah, they writing that up as a homosexual couple right there. See it, see it coming 20 episodes away. Like right now, if you're watching Have and Have Not, you got him in there trying to, oh, sir. I told Mama Lev, shh, look at that. I said, my God, here we go again. Here we go again. Here we go again. And that just one example one illustration of it it's all the way across the board it well Reverend William I can just look at it and don't, just don't bother me no you lying bothers you bothers you and it will affect your mind you can be sitting there and uh, next thing you know it bam I, uh, you don't believe if you don't believe what you watch affects you there have been times I have been so upset with Jack Abbott until I could have just went up in the TV and just slapped him. And, and, and I don't get no check off of it. But sitting there watching him and Victor do the same thing, I'm, I told my wife, I say, I said, me and you, the, me and you the fool sitting up in here watching him. We ain't, get, we ain't getting no money out of this mess. And me and her about to get into an argument over Jack and Victor. <laughs> We're about to go to argue over Jack and Victor. Who's the most wicked? <laughs> See, we sit in church tonight and we laugh, but this is real. Got to watch. I, gotta, I, gotta, I, I can't just sit there and just let my beady eyes all day long consume this mess. I got to get up. I got to do something. I got to commit something to God. 
I got to go detox. I got to put a filter on that to start getting that. See, coming to Bible study is a good filter for your mind. Been out there all day in, in, in talking and seeing it and, and, and out of focus. You can come in here and where you going? Ask where you going on Tuesday? I'm going to detox. I'm going to choose. We got Tuesday night detox. I'm going to detox my mind from a lot of the stuff I had to deal with today so that it doesn't establish a stronghold there. Got the detox. So I have to watch what I look at. And I also have to watch for who and what I listen to. I got to guard that. I got to guard who controls my ear. I got to guard what I'm listening to. I got to guard that because it's going to affect my mind. I'm a music person in the sense that I love all genres of music. Uh, sometimes on 255, that's a cable channel, 255, they have uh, a lot of times you could go there, they have the oldie but goodies when they was really singing. You had to really sing back in the day. And then they have the uh, Marvin Gaye, The Temptations, uh, The Four Tops, Smokey Robinson, and the, oh, oh I'm, that whole Motown sound. And man, sometimes I just get, it, it, I, 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 I'll stop on it, and man, before I know it, that music has come in me. And I haven't forgot, I, I still know the lyrics to a whole lot of that music. All, all the devil needs to do now is find the knob so he can turn it on. And every now and then he turns it on and uh, I get to singing it and sometimes I just be just like, oh man, <laughs> just, just, just going back, just, just reflecting, going back, going back. Listening to that, you, you might not believe me. I don't want you to try, but just believe, believe this tonight. You can take your radio off a Christian station and put it on a secular station for about, I'll say, 21 days, and you won't go back to the Christian station. You won't go back. 21 days, the devil would have put a stronghold in your mind that now you want that more than you want the Christian station because of what you now listen to. You listen to that. You can listen to the devil, and he can tell you coming to church ain't important. It won't be long. You won't be coming to church at all. All depends on what you listen to has a bearing on how you live your life because it affects my mind. You hang around people that is negative, talking down the church, this, that, and the other, it will not be long before they will have that seed up in your mind. You'll be talking the same talk. Be talking the same way. Because I'm not guarding my mind. I can't let all that stuff get in. I, I don't know about you, but my head stayed foggy too long. I walked around in a, with a buzz too long. Right now, I thank God for the clarity that I have in my mind. I can't afford to let uh, a, another stronghold like that come up in my life, in my mind. So I got to filter my mind. I have to guard my mind. And God is not going to do that for me. He's not going to come down there and turn my TV off. He's not going to do that. I got the remote in my hand. And man, it is, it is so easy to be mused to sleep 
by the subtlety that the world is putting before us. Just muse us straight to sleep. We just fall into it, fall into it. I know every day of my life, I've got, to, I've got to find a way to get God in me every single day. I got to read something. I got to listen to something. I got to, I got to put it in me to combat all the other stuff that's coming at me. If I don't, then what's going to happen? I'm going to fill my mind with the garbage of the world so much so until it's going to take over. I have to do that. I got to do it. I got to go have a cram session. I got to go pray. I got to go get me a tape. I got to go read me some scripture. I got to go meditate on something so that I can make certain that I'm trying to guard my mind. Because if the devil gets that stronghold back, get me by the reins of my mind, I, I used to hear the old deacon pray, and God, I want you to hold on to the reins of my mind. I didn't understand what they were talking about back then. But now I understand. I understand what they were talking about. And if I don't guard it, if I'm not being conscious, aware of what the devil is doing and what I'm doing, what I'm allowing, man, before you know it, my mind has led me right back to doing this. Right back to drinking, and I'm not talking about milk, iced tea, and water. There I go again, because he put that right here in my mind. So my job, my Christian duty, with the help and with the resources of God, is to help my mind to get my mind renewed, that I can have in, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ. That's what Paul says. Because I can tell you, if my thinking is bad, then my behavior is going to be bad. Yeah, yeah. And I can tell you this mind, shoom, shoom, steady go. You look at somebody, boom, there you go again. And you're talking about a dangerous thing. Yeah. 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 Got, I got I to gotta protect it. I got to guard it. Because I don't want it to become a dumping ground for the devil. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, let me show you something. We'll close tonight. If you're a person that uh, likes a good manicured yard. When you, well, for men that's into that kind of stuff, when you uh, get your, take your shirt off or however you do it and you get out there and you sweat, you manicure your yard, you wash your driveway down, then you get you a big coke or something and you sit out there and you look at it with your legs crossed. You talking about a good feeling. See, like it just muse you so much, just relax. If somebody came with a dump truck and saw your yard and just decided, I'm going to turn your yard into a dumping ground, got the dump truck and it's backed up, backed up his digging grid for your yard, and just get ready to dump. I see you right now, you'll get up. Holy, holy fellow, you can't dump that in my, you can't put that in my yard. I just got my yard. Oh, no, my yard ain't no dumping ground. But the devil has a dump truck. Every day he's backing up. He's backing up, and he's dumping. Come on now. And some loads we accept. Some loads we let him dump. And we have to end up working for months and something to try to clean up the mess. Would have been better off if I hadn't let him dump that mess in my yard. Yeah. Because I can tell you, it's a lot easier to stop him from dumping than to try to clean it up after the fact. And that's my Christian duty. 
That's part of my Christian duty, is to do that. Let me close tonight and tell you how grateful I am to be able to share that with you and to thank you for your commitment to come to Bible study and learn the word of the Lord. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Let's do offering and we'll get you out for tonight. Let me just say thank you all again for coming. Continue to do it. Pray for me as we go forward. Uh, don't know what we're going to teach next. Wait on God to share that with us, but pray for us. Okay. And thank you so much. Remember that early voting has already commenced. So for those of us who need to go to the polls, let's do that. The earlier the better. Oh, Father, thank you tonight for the offering. We bless it, ask you to bless it, and to help us, Father God, to be cheerful givers always. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, when you get done, you can stand. Let's continue to pray for our nation. Let's do that. Let's pray for our nation. Pray for our nation. And you can't pray for our nation without praying for our president. We have to pray. It should be concerning to us, and I believe that it is, what's going on in our world, uh, that tragedy that happened last week down in Florida. I understand that to some extent, uh, how the people feel. One lady said she didn't want that prayer. She was misunderstood. She said, we don't want your prayers and your sympathy. She didn't mean that she didn't value prayer. She meant, we just don't want you presidents and elected officials to come down here and make a cameo appearance and say, I'm praying for you and you have my condolences. That's what she meant. It did not mean that that woman did not value prayer at all. She said, you, you, you got to do more than pray. That's, right. That's exactly what she meant, and I agree with her. But right now, look like things are getting ready, something getting ready to happen. Yeah. It took, man, I hate to say it, but God raised, not us, God raising them teenagers up. And they ain't backing down. We can do better as a nation, and we have to do better. Have to do better. And it starts right in here with us. Praying, uh, President Trump said he's getting ready to sign some legislation, uh, taking the buck stocks off of them AR-15s, getting ready to sign that into legislation. But he's going to have a fight on his hand with the NRA because they ain't going to want to let it go because they're making too much money. But we got to pray for him. If you didn't vote for him, right now I'm going to tell you, time to pray for him. Time to pray for him. Got to pray for our president. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you, God, for being in control of all things. We know you work all things for good. And, Father God, we thank you for the word tonight. We thank you for the fellowship of the believers. And we thank you, Father God, that we have a place with you always. Bless us as we get ready to go home. I pray for safety. I pray for a good night's sleep. And I pray for a better day on tomorrow. We love you and we give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all